Hello everyone and welcome back to this deep dive series dedicated to device provisioning with AWS IoT. My name is Charles Wokmeni. I'm an IoT Specialist Solution Architect at AWS and I'll be running this series alongside my colleague and good friend Yuri. This video is the first installment of the series and here we'll be discussing our first provisioning option which is just-in-time provisioning, GITP in short. So the agenda is going to be as follows. We start with a reminder on what is device provisioning and why does it matter to you as a user. Then we'll recall the requirements for a device fleet to exchange message securely and at scale with AWS IoT Core. That is our managed MQTT broker service. And after that, we dive deep on our provisioning mechanism, GITP, how it works, and what are the best use cases for this first provisioning mechanism. Then we'll continue the presentation with the live demo that is already available on our AWS uh, GitHub account online. So you can check the links in the comment. And then we end the presentation with some next step and further reading if you want to dip, dive deeper. Starting with the challenges, let's imagine you're already aware and confident about the benefits you can enjoy having your fleet on AWS IoT. The scale, the reliability, the integration with major backends like Apache Kafka, with data lakes, etc. Then when you're planning for your project implementation, at least two major questions may come to your mind. The first question is, how do I onboard my entire fleet efficiently? Remember, we are talking about potentially hundreds, thousands, or even mil millions of devices. The second aspect is, how can I do all of that securely? This means ensuring only duly authenticated and authorized devices can be onboarded by my onboarding mechanism. How do I ensure that security in the process? Well, to understand how to tackle security aspects during provisioning, let's work backwards from how security is ensured for already onboarded devices. Two major ways AWS IoT ensure onboarded device security is number one is mutual authentication between the connected device and AWS IoT Core, which is our uh, MQTT broker, and also policy documents that are attached to your IoT thing in the cloud. And we are going to discuss IoT thing a little bit later. So, for mutual authentication, it requires not only the broker to present its certificate during the TLS handshake, but also the client device that is willing to connect to AWS IoT Core to present a valid certificate matching with the device private key. And this is what you can see on the picture here. So every device that is already onboarded needs to have a private key and a unique certificate. Now, on the other side of the picture, on the cloud side, any onboarded device has its own representation in AWS IoT. And that representation is called a thing, as in IoT Internet of Things. And this thing is saved in a thing registry that is internal to AWS IoT Core. A copy of the device certificate is also saved in AWS IoT Core and binded to the corresponding thing. And finally, a policy document is attached to that thing as well. And that policy uh, document is going to describe the device permission in AWS Cloud, meaning your MQTT publish, your subscribe, your connect, etc. So this is the final state we are trying to get to after the onboarding is successful. Obviously, if you start your IoT project from scratch, none of the cloud side resources exist prior to onboarding. This means that the provisioning mechanism selection process mainly depends on the device side readiness beforehand. The main question is then, are the unique certificates and private key already in your devices? Here's a holistic view of the mechanism offered as of today by AWS, categorized by device readiness. So on the left side, you can see extreme left side, you can see uh, all the mechanism for devices that are already have certificates, the middle one for devices that don't have certificates, and we have some special cases that we are going to cover in this series. So today we are going to start with the first, our first provisioning mechanism that is just-in-time provisioning. Still referring to our requirement summary picture, we can say that GITP is suited in cases where devices in your fleet are ready. 
That is, they already have a unique certificate and a private key each before attempting the first connection to the cloud. And practically in general, this means that as a fleet owner, you own a private certificate authority or private TA that is going to generate the certificate and sign them. And then the certificate are later embedded in the device alongside the device image, software image, and the private key, private to provisioning. So at provisioning, only cloud resources creation needs to be taken care of. And also note that for provisioning efficiency purposes, because so far we discussed the security aspect, but for the efficiency purposes, the GITP mechanism provision all the device matching IoT resource in the cloud just in time, meaning on the first attempt to connect. This indeed ensures that only active devices in the fleet create resources in the cloud, and this leads to significant operational cost saving and also cloud resources saving. Let's see a little bit how GITP uh, work behind the scenes. There are three major stakeholders in the GITP flow. The first one is the device maker. The second one is the device or the device fleet. And the third one is AWS IoT Core, that is the MQTT broker. Now understand, there are two critical prerequisite steps before the proper GITP flow can start for each device. For the first step, the signer CA needs to be registered to AWS IoT Core. And this is going to create a trust relationship between AWS IoT Core and the certificate authority that signed or that we signed all the certificate in the device to be provisioned. This is absolutely necessary, absolutely necessary for the future client certificate authentication to be successful. Now, the second critical step is for the device maker to generate and sign the device unique certificate and make sure it, it is embedded into the device fleet. Now, once these two steps are completed, the proper GITP flow can be triggered anytime for any device that has certificate signed by the certificate authority. So this is just a way to ensure that there's a trust relationship between AWS IT Core and all the devices that are, that are trying to connect to, uh, to the broker. Now, this is the proper GITP flow. The first thing that happens is that the device is going to send the certificate and attempt to connect, but it's going to fail because that certificate is not say is not registered yet into AWS IoT Core. Then IoT Core is going to verify the signer of the certificate that is presented. And once that signer's CA is, is verified, then the GITP fork can be created. So the IoT thing is going to be created, the certificate is going to be saved and the policy is going to be attached to the IoT thing that, it create, that is created. And there's one thing very important here, that is provisioning template that I'm going to discuss in one or two minutes. So just as a summary, what we did here is we started by creating the trust relationship between the signer CA that signs all the certificate and AWS IoT Core. Then the certificate are embedded into the devices themselves. And once they are embedded, and the device is started, then the device is going to send a connection attempt to AWS IoT Core. AWS IoT Core is going to check for the signer of the certificate that is presented and check if the signer CA is a registered signer inside the AWS IoT Core. And once it's verified, then it's going to trigger the whole GITP flow. And once this is achieved, then the certificate is trusted. And on the second attempt, then the connection can happen and you can perform all your MQTT operation. Publish, subscribe, connect, disconnect, all the operation and even reach to the back ends. In the previous slide, I mentioned the provisioning template and this needs to be uh, explained here. So the provisioning template is a way to map the physical identity that is recorded inside the device certificate to the cloud identity that is about to be created by the GITP flow. So first thing first, let's see. You have your hardware device, and inside the hardware device, you have an X509 certificate. And within that certificate, you have some physical identity elements. So the serial number, the common name, the distinguished name, the organization, organization unit, and other fields that can be created within the certificate. On the other side, the GITP flow is trying to create 
uh, an AWS identity then that is a digital representation of your device. And that cloud identity is going to include the thing name, the thing type, the thing attribute, the thing groups, the billing group as well, and then the corresponding policy. So attach a policy. Now the obvious question that you can have is how do I map that physical identity that I already have with the digital identity that I'm trying to create? This is where provisioning template comes in place. So this is a binder between the fields that are already present in the physical identity and the cloud identity that is going to be created by GITP flow. And you can see it's a JSON document that is going to describe uh, this mapping operation. So let's see an example right here. This is a typical example of a provisioning template. First things you, you declare are the, the, the fields in the certificate that you are going to copy or that you are going to use to create your new identity. Here you have the ID, the common name, the serial number, and so on and so forth. And then on the resources side, this is the cloud side, cloud side resources that GITP is going to, to create. You have your thing, and within the thing, you have your properties. Now the properties thing name is going to refer back to the serial number on the certificate. And in terms of uh, attributes, you have uh, the hardware version, the serial number, and these are going to be inherited from the certificate values, common name and serial number, and so on and so forth. And you also have the thing named and the thing group, the billing group, as I presented in the previous, uh, in the previous slide. And the last aspect that you can see here is the policy. Now, the policy is going to indicate is for the authorization part. So that policy is going to indicate what policy document is going to be attached automatically to all the provision device with this DHCP flow. So this policy name, we can find it back in your account and it's going to give the authorization to for the publish, the subscribe, the connect, all your MQTT operation and all the operation, eventual operation with the backend service. So this is a very powerful mechanism that we can use uh, to make sure that we have a, we have a binding between uh, your certificate and the cloud identity. Now that we cover the theory behind GITP Justified Provisioning, let us proceed with a live demo of how it actually works. So for this demo, we have two blocks of steps. The first block is really to prepare the environment before we run the proper demonstration. And then the second block is going to be the actual demo execution. So for the first, first block, we are going to create the hierarchy in the cloud, create the JITP provisioning role, create the provisioning template and the IoT policy, and then create the private CA and, and register it to AWS IoT. Once this first block is completed, then we are going to start with the actual demonstration. And for the actual uh, demonstration, we have three basic steps. The first step, we provision the, we provision the device, meaning we create a private key and then uh, we generate a certificate with the certificate authority that we created before. And the, on the second step, we provision the cloud, we provision the cloud resources. And this is going to be done automatically just by sending, trying to push data to AWS IoT call, just to verify that our provisioning is happening automatically. And this is just a picture of the demo architecture that we have with the simulation script that is on the GitHub repo that you're going to see in the, in the comments. And then with this simulation flow, we are uh, triggering a Docker Compose and Docker Compose is going to create all our clients. And all our clients are going to send certificate signing requests to our private certificate authority. And the private certificate authority is going to return the certificate. And once the certificate are returned, the clients are going to push directly the data to AWS IoT Core. And this is when we can we are going to witness how the, the cloud resources are automatically created according to the client, the client certificate information. So check the GitHub link in the comments and then we can meet for the live demo.